How much would you pay in bandwidth dollars for a site like this? A gorgeous site that can search for any address in whatever, you know, your fiefdom and show all kinds of things, the nearest parks, beautiful icons, the ability to show maps of all this stuff, uh, optional YouTube video, colors, buttons, scrolling. How much would you pay in bandwidth for a site like this? Well, I hear you. you you're saying, Tobin, I would pay anything for a site like this. I would pay a thousand kilobytes in bandwidth, 1500 kilobytes, two megabytes in bandwidth I'd pay for this. Well, you're not going to. This site, even with all this stuff, is coming in at 30 kilobytes. 30 kilobytes over the wire. That's everything. That's JavaScript, CSS, HTML, fetching the parks here, images, it's everything. 30 kilobytes. And how I'm doing that is what I want to show you today. Because it's, ah, I'm so excited. This is a new version of GeoPortal I'm playing around with. I was playing around with it, I had to set it down to do some other stuff, and now I'm playing around with it again. And I'm using Rollup and Svelte and Tailwind, and I'm really enjoying it. And Rollup has the ability to do what's called code splitting. Normally, when you're doing modern-ish JavaScript type stuff, uh, I differentiate that because we usually all start out by pointing to like jQuery and a bunch of different libraries at whatever servers they're sitting on, which is not a great way to go. But after that, usually your next step is you're making a bundle and you're making one big bundle of stuff, big bundle of JavaScript, big bundle of CSS, and you're shipping that. What code splitting does is it splits that bundle into functional groups and you only load those as you need to. So for example, this website, the map is optional. You don't, if you just want to find out where your nearest parks are, you don't necessarily have to see a map. You might want to, so we can toggle that on, but you don't have to. Now the biggest thing you're going to be shoving down your user's throats is, when doing mapping, is mapbox.gl. It's, it's quite large, but we can skip that until they request a map, and then we can send it at that time. And that's what code splitting does. You can split that kind of thing up. Let me show you how that works, because it's pretty neat. I'm also doing this as native uh, uh, ES6 modules, which is, ah, that's cool. Let's look. Enough talk. More look. Bigger. I want bigger. 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 GIS people are old. They got to be able to read this. Okay. So in Rollup, and the syntax for Webpack is pretty similar. You do a regular import, like you import, you know, whatever you need, JavaScript, what have you, like this. This is a traditional ES6 import. What we're doing here is we're telling our, our bundler, which is Rollup in this case, by this syntax that we're only going to import this library later. And in this case, if the show map is set to true, then I want to, it to import mapbox.gl. And then it's going to set that to GL and then do its thing after that. So until show map is true, don't import this. And what the, com the, uh, the bundler does, it sees that and it puts that JavaScript in a separate JavaScript file and it loads that dynamically as you need it. So right now we are, you probably can't read that, but that is 30.42 kilobytes. This is actually about five kilobytes bigger than what the final project is going to be because I don't need to include all of this appy park stuff until they actually find a location. The actual shipping size is probably going to be more like 25 kilobytes for everything. <laughs> but let's say we're going to show a map here. It's going to fetch a map. Now you look and our what we have downloaded is 582 kilobytes because after we did that, it went and fetched our map, which is 183 kilobytes, 723 kilobytes unzipped. And then after that, it goes and it gets our, uh, our styling, it goes and gets the tiles and whatnot. 
So we click that and we just added 550 kilobytes to our page. So we can hide that map if we do that again. Uh, it's a little bit misleading here because I had I had uh, disabled cache turned on. Let's do this again. So now we're at, we'll grab that. It's adding some stuff. We toggle this on and off. It's not going to go refetch that stuff. So we're staying at the same amount transferred. So that's what code splitting does. It splits that up. And it's basically something you want to, you don't want to do this by hand. You want to run this through your bundler. And this is how you do that in Rollup. What I did, because I found it easier, is I made two Rollup configuration files, the, the normal one and this config no module. And you do this because not every browser supports uh, importing ES6 stuff. So this no module is going to let us pick between what's JavaScript deliverable to send down to the client. So when I do npm run build, it runs both module and no module scripts. The module just is rollup-c, the no module is rollup-c, and then it is giving a specific path to the special configuration I want to use for that. Now rollup, all I really changed here is instead of doing a iffy format, and that's like a self-referencing function, I'm doing standard uh, ES a JavaScript uh, ES6 import kind of thing. And instead of giving it a specific file output, you're giving it a directory output because it's going to write files as it needs to. It will write main.js, so that's what you import. But what it does after that depends on what you are dynamically importing. So that makes our ES formatted stuff, but not every browser can handle that. So the second one, outputs using system.js, which browsers can handle the, the old stuff. I, I, it's Internet Explorer 11 that I'm talking about here, really. I'm giving it a directory again. So now in our output in public, we have a no module folder, and this has JavaScript files for our uh, for for no module stuff, IE11, you see mapboxgl got its own uh, hashed file, and that's where that big chunk goes. That's what we only load as needed. And JS is laid out the same way, but the files are formatted slightly differently, so the browsers can support them. So that's what I'm doing. For Since I'm using Svelte, which can include CSS in it, you have to keep even in your no module one, some CSS related stuff, you just don't tell it to output anywhere. So it's basically stripping the CSS out and not throwing it anywhere. And then in my regular rollup configuration, that's where it sends the CSS out to where it needs to go. So it's basically just two rollup files and it runs either one as it needs to. And in the HTML file, when you load those, you're doing kind of a a module, no module switch, saying script type module. And browsers that don't support uh, JavaScript modules won't run this line. The modern browsers will, and that'll get J main JS from our JS folder. For older stuff, it has this no module, which uh, modern browsers will ignore. Old browsers will Modern browsers will ignore this whole thing. Older browsers don't know what to do with that, so they'll just pretend it's not there. And it'll load the new module, main.js. And that's how you can split those things up. So we're basically only leading, uh, loading what we need to. And that way, when you are loading the page, that heavy MapboxGL stuff is not getting loaded, and we are down to barely over 30 kilobytes for the entire thing. And if you look at what we're sending, I'm also using purge CSS with post CSS to get rid of stuff. The CSS for all of this, the, the layout, the search buttons, icons, this table is actually responsive. So if you go to a mobile size, it'll break down the rows into individual things so you don't get it all squished. 
all of that uh, all of that is coming down in a little less than four kilobytes of CSS for the whole thing and that's what's great about Tailwind and Purge CSS is it's 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 like a, a utility library rather than a component library and it, you don't end up with this 100 kilobyte wad of CSS you need to deal with or the uh, good times you have trying to tree shake CSS which is kind of an impossible thing yeah that's that's what I wanted to show you and I will put in the blog post which I'll link to in the YouTube video the roll-up configuration I'm using and a, a little bit of code where I'm doing a, a an import in a way that roll-up can see that and know I need to, to code split this. And that's it. I'm still plugging away as I get time on this project. Uh, Parks works. Libraries works. Uh, map doesn't really do anything yet. And neither does anything else. So, got a little bit more work, but most of the heavy lifting is done. The table and map are all pretty well abstracted out, and I just need to... Uh, I just need to free up some more time to do this. I, I was kind of hoping to get this done by the end of the year, but right now it's looking shaky. And besides, it violates the rule that people that work in government never do anything in December, so I'm, I'm already screwing that up. Anyway... I hope you found that useful. I will put some code samples in the blog notes and I will catch you later. Bye-bye.